morning YouTube. How are you this morning? I'm all right. Except when I feel like I'm dying when I'm having a coughing fit. Like I did through the previous edit of this video. Oh boy. I decided to get rid of that so you wouldn't be subjected to it. Never know you might get my germs through YouTube. And virus. Uh, it's a little after 7.15. I just got through pre-trip in the truck and I'm getting ready to leave. I got up about an hour after my uh, available time was done. My break time was done. Mostly because I didn't feel compelled to rush and get up. It was raining at the time. So I just kind of hung out, laid in bed. Then got up, went inside, took a shower, got a drink. And then, uh, like I said, came out, pre the truck. So I'm getting ready to leave. Um, I don't feel too compelled to go in because the simple fact is I'll, I'll get to Mount Airy as long as I actually move the truck. And I'll be there some, tomorrow sometime. Yeah, it's, uh, unless I spend like 13 hours in traffic. It's a given that I'll be there. Uh, excuse me. So I'm going to make a pit stop at the Pearl, Mississippi yard which is about two hours away. It's actually right next to the Flying J in Jackson. I didn't know that. It's just down the street. So, we'll stop there, see if they can, uh, if there's anybody there, of course, swap out my ratchet binder and uh, give me a box of budgies. I'm gonna ask about the, uh, the Park Smart too to see if there's anything they can do about it. I was told though on the phone that for the air conditioner part that I'd have to go to take, the, take it to Little Rock and have it worked on there. Uh, the side shops really from DMs and things like that. And you know, minor repairs. Replacing the air conditioner or fixing the coil or whatever's wrong with it that doesn't let it blow cold air in the back is probably a big shop's work. So I don't know. But I at least maybe get a box of bungees and get that ratchet binder replaced. Which would be a which would be a help. So I will let you know. Hey again, YouTube. How are you? I'm all right. Uh, I'm at the yard here in Pearl, Mississippi. Um, it's uh, got a really really big parking lot. I mean, really big. Um, apparently it. Uh, belonged to a company that Maverick bought that was a reefer company or excuse me, temperature control company and it's still mostly a temperature control yard I think the name was Harris I don't remember he told me and it's on one of the little trailers out here, but it's a dirt lot and it's kind of muddy right now in a few places but I was able to get a new ratchet binder Brand new. He said he would replace all of them for me, but I don't feel like taking the tarps off to get the other one. And uh, I got some bungees. They didn't have any boxes. Apparently, someone came in earlier and grabbed their last box, and they're not getting another shipment of stuff until Monday. I'm not waiting till Monday. But he did give me a bunch of bungees. I'd say probably 30 or 40 that he had uh, already tied up and uh, hanging in there. I was also thinking of doing my laundry here, um, just because. Uh, I mean, I got clothes, but all this, my favorite stuff is all dirty, nasty. But they don't have any laundry facilities here. They also apparently don't have showers. This is a very simple place, he said. And they've been here two and a half years, so I figured, you know, maybe they would have done some upgrades. But guess not. Um, I mean, you don't even need a, uh, an access card to get in here, which most yards you have to have an access card. But at least I know the shop is here. In case I need it, um, they can't really do anything major, but they could do PMs and stuff, and they got equipment, so that's a good thing. Oh, and I was able to get some new edge protectors to replace the bad ones. So I'm going to try and uh, head on into Georgia. I got nine hours of driving time left available today. Here's my dilemma, and I'm not really sure what to do about it. I was looking at my logs and my hours. I only have 14 left of my 70. 
that's literally just enough to get to the shipper, to the receiver, and deliver. And then maybe, maybe, drive across town to the Flying J that's there in Mount Airy before I run out of hours. And that's if I don't spend too much time unloading when I get to Mount Airy. Because I'm not getting any hours at all until Tuesday morning. So, I'm going to end up sitting till Tuesday after I deliver to be able to work. And then on that day, I'm only going to get like seven hours, maybe eight. I don't know yet. It won't tell me. So, that's where we stand. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I'll have to think about it and let you know. Good evening, YouTube. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, actually. I'm feeling much better. I'm still a little congested. I'm not coughing as much, but I'm feeling a whole lot better. Uh, I'm in Carnesville, Georgia. That's uh, I-85, exit 160. At the Flying J. This is a nice truck stop. It, uh, I've never been to this one. Been to a lot of them. But I've never really done much Georgia stuff. Right now this lot is only about a third full. And there is no reserve parking. So I'm thinking that probably this place either doesn't get full. Or if it does, it's rare. Because just about every pilot in Flying J has reserve parking. Of course, they may have just not gotten to this one yet. That's a distinct possibility. Across the street is a Petro that's about half full. I was sort of tempted when I was coming up here to stop at exit 147, though, at the TA, because uh, I saw the billboard. They have a Fuddruckers. Wow. That's awesome. I'm going to have to remember that. I'm not a big fan of TAs. I like Petros, but not TAs. I know they're the same company, but they are distinctly different truck stops. It's like Flying J and Pilot are the same company, but they're distinctly different truck stops. And, uh, you know, uh, but uh, that Flying J is also in the middle of a, 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 a business district. And there's a mall across the highway. There's restaurants everywhere. There's an Outback Steakhouse, a Red Lobster, and an Olive Garden right around the corner. You can walk to them. And there's a Walmart down the street. I should have stopped there. Big, but this is better for me uh, because of internet. I know that is stupid and shallow, but internet for me is important, especially right now because uh, after looking at all my hours and taking a look at everything, what's going to happen? If I got here and then took my ten and drove on into Mount Airy, when I got to Mount Airy. I would have like 40 minutes to unload and then I would be out of my 70 and then I would have to sit at that consignee for 34 hours to reset or till midnight at least to get like I think eight and a half hours that's it so I opted to come here because it's got pretty much everything I need it's got a truck stop with good Wi-Fi they have the enhanced here and a Petro across the street with a restaurant I like to eat at. And I got a good parking space and I got a good signal to the Wi Fi because I wanted to try it. So I'm going to reset here. It means I leave 5 15 on Monday morning. I will get to Mount Airy uh, right at about 11, between 10 and 11, depending on traffic, and uh, be able to deliver and still have some hours left to go do something else. Uh, to at least head to someplace if they give me something. If not, I'll be able to at least go over to the Flying J that's in Mount Airy and wait till the next day till they give me something. I'm hoping that Maverick sees the logic of that. Because otherwise, I'd be stuck in Mount Airy yeah, at the consignee until I got my hours back. And if I did it the way they wanted it, 
and got there and slept on their lot and delivered at the crack of dawn when they opened, I would still have to sit there for about 20 hours uh, before I could do anything. So I think this is obviously the best bet to reset here. I do not like resetting on the road because boredom sets in. But that's the key for having good internet. Netflix and iTunes movies, Hulu Plus, and all the other things. That leads me to, to think about making the video I was talking about about entertainment on the road. As opposed to just having a DVD player and TV. There's lots of things you can do if you have the opportunity. So with that being said, I am going to reset here and then carry on. Um, on the early Monday morning with everything. I haven't decided if I'll make a video for tomorrow. We'll just have to see what's going on. Um, today's trip was good, but it was very, very long. I think I told you earlier I'd stopped in Pearl at the yard to pick up some things and check on getting my Park Smart fixed. Of course, they couldn't do anything about that, so... I ended up leaving, taking off. Um, I drove for uh, quite a bit and then uh, took a couple of breaks for bathrooms, load checks. Um, I did stop outside Atlanta and fill up on uh, diesel because I, I was getting really low. I was kind of hoping to make it here, but every time I climbed a hill, uh, the uh, fuel lap would come on, but then I'd level off and then go back up to just under a quarter. I probably had the fuel to get here. I just didn't want to chance it. And I'm glad I didn't because Atlanta, um, I had forgotten what a nightmare that town is to drive in. <laughs> I've only driven in maybe two or three times in my career. Uh, I've, I've steadfastly avoided Georgia um, for some reason. At least, uh, you know, Atlanta. I've never had, I've only had to pass through it a couple times. And today was hideous. Um, it started before I even got to the 285 bypass. It took, um, from, the time, from getting to the bypass, just before, about maybe two miles before the bypass, to getting on I-85 after going around, took three hours and 10 minutes because of construction. And also because of a storm that hit. Once I got past, well, was I was getting past the construction, actually it hit while we were in the construction coming to the end. Um, they had blocked off two lanes on the right for a while, and then there was a little bit of an opening, and then they blocked off two lanes. And of course, they were doing, there was absolutely no work. And traffic was so bad, there's so many people on the roads, that it was just hideous. I think it was barely moving five miles an hour. Barely. There were times where it was move up a little bit. There was one point where I got to a place, I don't remember what it was, but we sat there for, 50, I sat right there next to the exit ramp to go up to a local side street for like 30 minutes. And it couldn't, no one was talking on the radio. Uh, all four lanes were stopped. We hadn't got to the next two lane shrink yet. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna take a back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut through town to heck with this. Because I only had, I was running out of time. And um, it was telling me it was gonna take me three hours to get to that mess. So I got up on the exit ramp and tooled up to the light and was sitting at the light, looking at the uh, map, map to decide which way to go either go right to go through town and then get on 85 over there or go all the way around take this big weird loop around um, that would only move me like four miles up the road but it would at least get me away from whatever was going on so after I could see that there was an accident right at the two lane closure where the two lanes come together where it ended the four lane went down to two and it was blocking up the whole thing and the cops were letting one car at a time go through the cones around the accident I was like, oh, this is bogus. So I went ahead and did what I always detest people doing. Go When the light changed, I went down in the entrance ramp to get on the freeway. And and just as I, I got to where the accident was, was at the ramp. So I was able to wheedle my way through, get through and haul butt. I don't like doing that. I don't like people who do it. But it, this time, it just worked. It just, ha it just happened to be that way. Because I was going to take a different route completely. But that just happened to be the opportunity. So, um, but then I got about like halfway up the loop, still had like 12 miles to go, and uh, the sky got black and it started to come down. 
the wind picked up and I could look out the back window and I could see the back of my trailer tilting. The wind was coming up under it and started to lift it a little bit. Um, it was a major, major storm. I don't know if you've ever been through Atlanta or any part of Georgia, but all on the freeways, they have these really tall trees. And, but, and the, the wind was blowing so strong, it was blowing limbs and stuff off those trees and uh, onto the freeway. And it was smacking the windshield and the passenger window. It was, it was bad, the whole truck was rocking. The freeway was moving like 10 miles an hour, if that, in this torrential downpour. Couldn't see nothing, hailstones about that big hitting the truck. I'm surprised I don't have any dents or a broken windshield. Um, finally got through all that, um, just as uh, my uh, DOT alarm told me that I had uh, an hour of driving left just as I was getting out of Atlanta. Luckily for me, it was an hour drive to this spot. I mean, I was able to haul butt, no stops once I got past, got past all that junk. And uh, I got here and parked and did a walk around. The wind did some hellacious damage. Um, I had to pull out a bunch of uh, leaves and little branches and stuff that got stuck in the bungees on the load. And um, and it looks like uh, one of the hailstones hit one, hit it just right on one of the four by fours that are holding the TP part of the tarp and tore the tarp. So the tarp is torn on one on one end. It doesn't. It's not jeopardizing the load uh, because there's another tarp underneath it. So that's good. Um, but the water, the the rain was driving so hard it was shooting all along the side. And when I straightened the tarp back out, all this water comes up and out of it. So it's dark now, and tomorrow uh, when I get up, I'll go take a look and see if there's anything else I need to do. Because it started to rain. The storm that I outran is now getting to where I'm at. So that's about it. It was a rough day. And uh, as usual, videos run long because I talk too much. So I'm going to call it a night. Grab me something to eat. I got stuff here in the truck and uh, call it uh, watch a little uh, Netflix or something and uh, so uh, if you have any questions or comments please post them below or email me uh, you can post on TTR too I'll probably be on there this weekend I'll have plenty of time and uh, take a chance uh, cl click the subscribe button and follow me if you're not already and uh, we'll talk tomorrow so until then Keep the shiny side up, 73s, and have a good night.